Sorry, I snagged a husband who's a doctor making $300,000 older lady. I unexpectedly got the day off and came home to find my husband in bed with a young woman. The two of them on the bed were the ones who should have been blamed. But instead of apologizing, they kicked me out of the house. Under the starry sky, something snapped inside me. Awakened by the words of my neighbor, advising me to choose the path best for my daughter, it was time to decide what I as a mother should do. Those two were about to face their consequences. My name is Stacy, 45 years old. I became a doctor after graduating from college. At 33, I married John, five years younger than me. Introduced by a friend, two years later we had our daughter, Catherine. After Catherine was born, my husband and I enjoyed parenting and household chores together. I returned to work when she started preschool, but that's when my husband changed. As a pediatrician, it's not unusual for me to be out at night for work. We agreed whoever could handle household tasks should do so, but my husband spent most weekends sleeping, leaving chores undone when I returned early in the morning. I brought it up several times, but his response was always, I'm busy too, leading us nowhere. Juggling work, housework, and parenting, I often thought of divorce due to the physical and mental strain, but stayed for our daughter's sake. Believing it's better to have a father around, now that she is 10 and more independent, I try to attend school events whenever possible. I'm happy to see her grow, but there's a downside. That's dealing with Jennifer, a mother of my daughter's classmate whom I find hard to get along with. She is particularly young and beautiful among the mothers. For some reason, she's always harsh with me. Our first meeting was a year ago on Parents' Day. Hello? Hi, which child's grandma are you? Excuse me? Oh, your mom? Sorry, you looked old enough to be here for your grandchild. You're lucky to be such a young mother. I know, right? You should try to keep up. That was our first conversation. A friend told me she's a single mother who had her child at a teen and works in a club to make ends meet. While she might be doing her best as a mother, I couldn't help doubting her capacity to raise a child. Whenever we meet, she never missed an opportunity to make snide remarks, but I'm not the age to be hurt by a young mother's comments. I'm used to such unfairness from my job, where mothers often harshly criticize me, where mothers often harshly criticize me, a pediatrician, out of concern for their children. She must have her struggles as a young mother. That's what I kept telling myself. But last year, when my daughter got the lead in the school play, Jennifer crossed a line. Is it okay for Catherine to be the lead? She's been practicing every day and enjoying it. That doesn't matter. Your old lady's daughter won't shine on stage. Excuse me. Just hope she doesn't embarrass herself. I bumped into Jennifer after watching the rehearsal. The casting and play were decided by teachers and students. Nobody thought like her. She was just bad-mouthing my daughter to get at me. But it's not pleasant to hear someone talk ill of your child. Were you there to watch the practice, Jennifer? I didn't see you. I don't have time, unlike you. I work and can't waste time here. That must be tough. Are you on a break now? I regretted my sarcastic response immediately, feeling like I stooped to her level. Despite all this, the play was a success, but her harassment intensified since then, and our monthly mother's dinner gossip is a staple. Just as the dinner party was getting lively, her well-informed mother started gossiping. I heard the police visited Jennifer's house for suspected child neglect. True, she's always alone when outside, at night in clubs, and during the day with married men. I even saw her with Stacy's husband. What? I might be mistaken, but they looked close. So I thought you should know. My friend Elizabeth told me this apologetically, but I had a hunch about my husband's infidelity. He's been coming home late and constantly on his phone, even suspecting his affair. My daughter's welfare comes first, but a month after hearing these suspicions, an incident occurred. It happened on a day when a colleague asked to swap shifts, turning my workday into an unexpected day off. It was also the day my daughter had her extracurricular activities, so after dropping her off and picking her up, we got home just before dusk. Opening the door, I saw unfamiliar slender-heeled shoes in the entrance. Sensing a scene not suitable for my daughter, I left her at my neighbor and friend Elizabeth's house. Then braced myself and entered our bedroom. What are you doing? 
Oh, lady, stop this disgraceful display and get dressed now. I had told my husband three days ago about my day off, but he seemed to have completely forgotten. Lacking their usual defiance, the two on the bed, my husband and Jennifer, numbly began to gather their clothes as told. Minutes later, both dressed, they sat silently in the living room before me. First, John, what do you plan to do now? I'm really sorry. I don't care about apologies. What about Catherine? I'll do as Stacy wishes. And you, what will you do? Huh? Jennifer's sudden interjection caught me off guard. There was no reason for me to be blamed by my cheating husband and his mistress. John looked shaken, but Jennifer was cool and unremorseful. Pressed for an answer, I said I would take legal action. Considering divorce, alimony, and child support, but Jennifer remained unfazed by my response. So you're giving John to me? Yes, take him. What about your daughter? You can claim compensation and child support, but we have no obligation to pay. Why? John told me you're always busy with your part-time job. Having attended to him for years, you should have cherished your husband more. What exactly are you talking about? I couldn't fathom her logic blaming the wife for the husband's infidelity. Next to Jennifer, my husband's expression shifted as if he agreed with her. Jennifer's right. Unlike you, she loves me for who I am. I love her too. Too bad for you. The ones leaving are us. You, the intruder, better leave now. My husband, now present, confessed his love for his mistress right in front of me. Realizing further talk was pointless, I sighed in disbelief and left, finding myself ousted from my own home. Looking up at the darkening sky, I hurried to Elizabeth's where my daughter was waiting. Elizabeth was worried since I was late, and I explained everything. Unbelievable. I know I mentioned divorce, but the thought of raising Catherine alone while being a doctor is daunting. What should I do? It's impossible for anyone to raise a child alone. Parenting and education involve everyone around the child. <laughs> Make the choice that's best for Catherine. Elizabeth's words helped me see what I should do. The next day, I took my daughter to my parents' house after explaining the situation. They were both shocked and angry. Having thought my husband was mild-mannered, they calmed down and promised to support me and Catherine as much as they could. I consulted a lawyer who said there wasn't enough evidence of infidelity, so a few days later, I lured Jennifer to the local park to execute a plan. What now? Why the sudden call? Sorry, there's something I need to ask. I'll listen to your sad story. Will you stop seeing my husband and apologize or continue the affair? Clearly the one who should get the hint and disappear is you. Really? Do you actually love John? Of course not. Such a weak old man. I'm only interested in his money. Sorry for taking a doctor who earns $300,000. For my daughter's sake and for myself, I gathered evidence. I'm sorry. For my daughter's sake and for myself, I gathered evidence of Stacy's infidelity and submitted it to my lawyer. Starting my counterattack against the two. About a month after the showdown while my husband was away at work, I moved our belongings to a newly rented condo and left our daughter with my parents. Waiting for my husband's return, he came back after 10 p.m. with Jennifer by his side. I surprised them by inviting them to sit down and then slamming the divorce papers on the table. Both seemed oddly pleased. My husband with gleaming eyes thanked me. I wondered why I ever married such a fool. I can't help but wonder about it now. Thanks for deciding on the divorce, old lady. I'm truly sorry. I'll be happy for your share as well. After confirming my husband's signature on the divorce papers, I retorted, Thanks to you for taking a mundane office worker. What? Did the shock make you forget your husband's job? Your ex is a doctor earning $300,000, right? Me? I'm the one earning $300,000. What? The atmosphere in the living room shifted. Jennifer, who hadn't been faced until now, was visibly shaken. A bead of sweat rolled down my ex-husband's forehead. It seemed Jennifer genuinely believed John was the doctor. She slowly turned to John, who eventually looked up. As soon as their eyes met, John hurriedly apologized. I lied to get your attention, Jennifer. I'm sorry. That's not just it. I may be just an office worker, but I'll make you happy, Jennifer. You can't make me happy without money, old man. What? I can't believe it. I was with you because you were spending so much money. 
Right, it was from Catherine's bank account. John's heart seemed crushed by Jennifer's blunt revelation of her materialistic love. John, a regular at the club where Jennifer worked, must have caught her interest when he falsely claimed to be a doctor. Realizing John was just an ordinary office worker with no money, Jennifer sighed heavily and stood up to leave. I told her about the impending compensation claim to which she turned back frowning in anger. I laid out the infidelity photos my brother took, explaining to Jennifer and John their obligations for compensation and child support. Why should I pay when it's your fault too? I was just with someone I liked. It's your fault for neglecting me. I love money, not some old man. You can't make me happy without money, old man. What? I can't believe it. I was with you because you were spending so much money. Right, it was from Catherine's bank account. John's heart seemed crushed by Jennifer's blunt revelation of her materialistic love. Their excuses were meaningless. Jennifer claimed the photos were from her work at the club, saying she had no obligations to pay as it was all part of her job. It doesn't matter whether they stay at home together or due to a hotel together because they are accompanied by each other, a husband blaming the cheated wife and a woman abandoning her cheating lover. It has a good meaning. I presented them with the final piece of evidence. What's this? Remember our talk in the park? It was recorded. What? I had secretly recorded our conversation in the park where I asked Jennifer about her future plans with John gathering evidence. The recording clearly revealed Jennifer's admission of being with John only for money, with no love involved. After listening, Jennifer collapsed. John looked like an empty shell. I informed my ex-husband about the upcoming claims for compensation and child support. As I was about to leave, he pleaded, Wait, I was wrong, so from now on, I'll only love you, Stacy. Let's start over. Stacy, you still love me, don't you? What are you misunderstanding? I don't love a useless man like you anymore. We'll be communicating through lawyers from now on. So please, take care of the compensation and child support. Following this, I formally divorced John after submitting the divorce papers. Jennifer, as rumored, was involved with many wealthy men besides John and kept getting caught in a pursuit for compensation payments. It seems she wasn't properly taking care of her son either, and her parents had to take him in. She's not allowed to see him anymore. I've heard from friends that she's likely to be fired from the club where she works. As for my ex-husband, the truth about his affair and being deceived by his partner spread throughout his company, leading to his isolation. Thankfully, he wasn't fired thanks to his boss, but his treatment is such that it might be better for him to be dismissed and find a new job. On my side, after the divorce, my daughter and I started anew in our new condo. Although she's only 10 and I couldn't tell her the details, she readily accepted the idea of being just the two of us after the divorce. When I asked her if she wanted to see her father, she just smiled wryly saying she barely has any memories with him. Since the divorce, my ex-husband has contacted me a few times through the lawyer, but it's always about money, never about our daughter. He truly is the worst husband and father. Now my parents help us and we support each other. Having Catherine is enough. But if the time comes to welcome a new father into our lives, I'll make sure to be more discerning to avoid such situations again.